Uh, right, so this is another one for no power. This one's in really good condition, actually. Much better than the last one. Stone dead. Stone dead. So, if you're watching this back as a video, by the way, if it does make a video, don't forget to subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, all of that jazz. I'm streaming on Twitch, so if you've got an Amazon Prime account, go over to Twitch, link it to your Twitch account, and you can subscribe to me for free. Yeah, it's completely no peril. This is Stone Dead. Stone Dead is much better than a beep on beep off because it's hugely easier to find out what's causing it. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. Whether you've got a simple project that requires a quick mod board or you want to launch your own products to the world, PCBWay can help. With fantastic pricing on multi-layer PCBs, flex PCBs, 3D printing and even laser cutting solutions, you're sure to get everything you need all in one place. Custom PCBs start from just $5 for a 1-2 to two layer board with a fast 24 hour build time and free shipping on orders over $30. PCBWay are also proud to announce their new aluminium PCBs which start at just $120 per square metre. Check out what PCB we have to offer by clicking on the link in the video description or the top pin comment and get your project started today. Thanks again to PCB Way for sponsoring the video. Let's get back to the repair. Alright, so we're going to V1 board. That's good because I've got a non-good working V1 board next to me. So what I'm going to do, just to try and speed this up, is I'm going to swap this door to, uh, swap this Southbridge board and see if it attempts to pair it on. The reason I know it's a V1 is because it's got the silk screen on it, which is basically the designators for the capacitors and stuff like that, and components. The V2 doesn't have the designators on them. This may or may not go to a beep on beep off with a non-working Southbridge board. Um, I've had one last week where we actually allowed it to boot up with a different Southbridge board, but we've always had to replace the BIOS and swap it from the original board in order to get these to work in the past. So whether Microsoft has done something recently in code or whether I just got very, very lucky, I don't know. Okay, it's the APU board box faulty. Unless the power supply is faulty. I haven't actually checked that yet. It could be the power supply. I watched that video earlier. Yeah, so... Um, Sometimes we can swap the Southbridge board, I guess. Right, okay. So let me just test the power supply itself then. Let me just see if I'm getting 12 volts. So I know that the... Well, unless there's an issue with both boards, it's going to be this board, what's faulty. Unless the power supply is faulty. I'll check that next. Should have checked it first, realistically. This has been open before because there are bends on the clips. Can you see that? So this has been open before. Someone's already worked on this. I don't mind prior repair attempts as long as it hasn't been ruined like the last one I just worked on. But if someone's worked on it and just looked at it, you know, or even if they've replaced a MOSFET or two, I'll do my own fault finding anyway. But when someone's ruined it, like the last one, there's just too many unknowns to be able to justify it. Unless they give you a full rundown of what, what they've actually done. So do I get voltage on the power supply? Yeah, 12 volts on the power supply. How about on the safe bridge connector? Yeah. Okay, so I'm getting 12 volts on the power supply, so it's not that what's causing it. I could have just tried an old good power supply, but it's just as easy to test that. So my next step would be to check for a 12 volt short. And the way I would do that is in continuity mode. Let's check from there to there. Four ohms. That's almost dead short, but 4 ohms is a bit of a problem because that 4 ohms is going to cause voltage injection to 
kind of act up a little bit. It's going to make it a little bit more difficult to inject voltage, unfortunately. Yeah, this has definitely been off before. So someone has been inside here. That's coming off way too easily. See? So someone has been inside here, but whatever. As long as they haven't completely destroyed it. So yeah, voltage injection is going to be a little bit tricky on this. Just given the fact that the multimeter reading 4 ohms, so it's not going to draw as much current as I want. I might actually have to go more than 1 volt on this because of that, which is obviously not good. Alright, let's give it a visual inspection first. So it's always important to give it a visual inspection first because it can show things without the need to go any further. These 86912s are fairly... Uh, Fairly poor quality. They do fail quite often. Essentially, to start with, I'm just looking for things like blown components, uh, burn marks, cracks in components, that sort of stuff. Well, the most common failure point on this is going to be the MOSFETs. Not seen a lot. To be honest. Alright, I'll inject voltage and clip on ground. I am gonna start at one volt and see what kind of current's being drawn. Yeah, see we've we're only getting six hundred milliamps of current draw there. I'm just gonna feel around first rather than using the thermal cam. Uh could probably do with using this probe, it's a little bit more Accurate, but I might have to increase my voltage on this because, like I said, it's a four ohm short, it's not dead short. If it was dead short, we'd be drawing a full five amps, but because it's only four ohms, that obviously causes an issue. 600 milliamps, <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to increase voltage here. Yeah, let's go steadily climbing. At 1.8 volt, we're getting 2.6 amps. And that's not good. The only thing that's getting remotely warm is the IPU. Not good. Uh, yeah. That is not good at all. Okay, so... IPU is getting slightly warm. At 1.8 volts. I think, realistically, the best thing to do here is to remove these coils and try and isolate these phases oh I just melted my new fucking wire look come on that's not cool brand new leads so much with heat resistant silicon <laughs> Still short, not those MOSFETs. So this is why I'll take the inductors off rather than the uh, the MOSFETs. It's easier. It's a lot quicker to take the MOSFETs off, uh, the inductors off. So taking the inductors off isolates the MOSFETs from the rest of the board. And they're a lot easier to put the, put back on than a bunch of MOSFETs as well. Right, if I had to put 15, 16 MOSFETs back on, it would take me forever. Ah, that's not good. Yeah, it's not the MOSFETs, is it? Oh. Wait, why is that not isolated? Oh, 
Huh. Really? Really? Removing those coils isolates the MOSFET from the rest of the circuit. Hang on a minute, I might have got this backwards. <laughs> I think I've got it backwards. Um, I don't know what the fuck I'm thinking, but I think uh, isolating it, removing the uh, the coils, isolates the APU from the um, 12 volt phase. Yeah, no sure. You stupid motherfucker. You're an idiot, Phil. You're an absolute idiot, Phil. What an absolute buffoon. <sighs> I'm a moron, I'm a moron, I'm a fucking moron. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I have no clue. Fake it till I make it. Pretend. If I talk really fast, it makes me sound like I'm I know what I'm talking about, doesn't it? It's like I can talk really fast about the flux capacitor and discombobulator, and it makes me sound really, really smart. See? Fake it till you make it. And I call myself a fucking technician. Ha! <laughs> is bullshit! You are, uh, how do you say, um, a fucking idiot, no? Why I uh, got that mixed up, I won't never know. Oh, I'm a moron. Listen, you might be able to sell them, but you can't fucking fault find. That's what the comment section will be on YouTube. You might be good at solving, but you're not good at fault finding. You don't know what you're talking about. You haven't got a clue. And to that I say to you, sir, I agree. <laughs> I wholeheartedly agree. Right. I think I just had a, a dumb moment, a dumb blonde moment, to be honest, overthinking things, should have just removed the inductors and tested it like I normally do, <laughs> if I remove this chip will he fix it? Uh -huh. Good enough. MPS eight six nine six five.
beautiful. Better than OEM, of course. I know this console should at least attempt to power on. So the reason I got confused is just because I got mixed up with um, whether it isolates the APU or the 12 volt. Um, should have known better. I'll fix that many of these things. Um, I did know what I was talking about, I promise. I just got confused for a minute. It happens to the best of us. Enough thermal paste to cure the nuclear reactor. Right then, laddie. Give me my uh, Nexus ribbon. Truth of moment. Ha! Yeah, buddy. All right, is it going to display? Yep, there we go. Cool, good, sweet, awesome, fantastic. It works. Another one brought back from the dead. Right, that'll get a full test tomorrow, but it is working. Let's just make sure it still works now. I'll just put it back together, though. Yep, there we go. Cool. Good stuff. Boom. There we go. Good. Yeah, another one brought back from the dead. Um, one faulty MOSFET. Good stuff. 